Well, I think they're going to have to be considered and they're going to have to be considered very seriously because they're going to be the difference between organizations that might have a competitive advantage versus other. Let me explain, right? I mean, we saw each other in front of video without any preparation. For some of us, it was wonderful. No commute. We had more time to do other things we like. For some others, it was really difficult, especially with isolation or even loneliness in certain cases, right? Moving forward, I think we're going to have the best organization thinking about it holistically not just thinking about the day at the office and maybe the office hours that the employee need to work, but really looking at the diversity of the employee in a very holistic way from morning to evening and beyond, right? Elements of wellness and health will be considered. And again, I think the winning companies will be the ones that really understand that. Yeah, I think all of us were actually not prepared for any of the uh, virtual elements that were thrown at us during the pandemic, right? We saw each other in front of a camera, but we didn't really know how to do. Plus there was obviously uh, the anxiety that was with the, the special pandemic. But at the same time, I think it provided a lot of empathy. Leadership got redefined. We all had to learn about uh, communication. And I think cross-culturally, we really kind of learned all by doing, right? I think what's going to be more interesting now is moving forward, you're going to have to have different kinds of meetings, elements of getting the workforce to collaborate and really understand how things get done in your company specifically. In my experience, I think you'll have to be intentional about, for example, the right kind of meetings, having coffee hours where you can share a lot about what's going on in the company, open doors meeting with the leadership so that you can create a rapport with something that's going on. And then finally, also kind of giving your workforce the tools, but also the culture to empower them to have their own ways of kind of meetings and communicating across what they do. One example I saw wonderfully in my past experience was a team deciding to create an Indian event called Diwali and the amazing amount of engagement and energy made me think that probably that's also a great way to do it. You need to empower your team and really let them understand how to best, best work cross-culturally in a virtual environment. Yeah, so the virtual collaboration spaces is really broad, right? Anything from very visual elements to others that are maybe more kind of I would say embedding some of the workflow and the processes into them. You have a lot of examples from what we call synchronous, which is instantaneous, to asynchronous elements. So uh, putting all of your files, for example, your chats and everything in, in one spot and having the potential to deal with it at the time that you like, right? I think the drawback of these elements is that it puts a lot of pressure on the employee. There's data everywhere, there's things waiting. It's really hard to think through all of these elements. So what we're gonna see again in the future is a new type of organizational design. I think the leaders of tomorrow and the companies who are going to be leading with this kind of elements tomorrow, they're going to be very successful at bringing together the various elements of their workplaces on which they really kind of design uh, elements, but also where they bring the culture and kind of understand that the employees really need to also advance at their own pace uh, for working with these collaboration tools.